Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm very happy to announce a new series on this channel, which is going to be about making a third-person shooter with GameMaker Studio. I really hope you're excited for this one as well, it has been requested a couple of times. And in the video that you're seeing right now, I will be showing you a little bit of what I'm going to teach you today, or what I'm going to, uh, you know, show you. It's just a very, very bare-bones third-person shooter with, uh, this time, only the camera and well you know a little bit of an environment going on there are no bullets yet you can't well you can shoot there's a shooting sound there's a bit of recoil on the gun but that's it there's no actual bullets coming out of it uh, coming out at the end of the gun which is supposed to happen later on in the series and also um, in this tutorial I will be um, having another poll up if you want this series to go on or not if you want me to continue the fir first person shooter rather than this one. I am working on a networking tutorial, so expect an online multiplayer tutorial soon. And I will be going to GameMaker Studio and I hope you will follow me. Hey there guys, welcome back to GameMaker Studio. Let's get started right away with this brand new series on this channel. Let's make a third person shooter today. Here are the sprites. There are two sprites which I will take the effort to show you. The player sprite and a floor a block sprite. That's all there is in your environment. There's a few blocks and a player. So there's no need for other sprites. Let's go to the backgrounds. A little transparent tiled texture. I don't know I don't really know what it is. It's just a floor texture for testing. A sky texture and a little bit of fake ambient occlusion which you can basically delete because it doesn't look very good basically it looks um, crap and yeah it, it's fake that's all I have to say there's a nice shader out there on the marketplace but I'm gonna be using this for now I'm using these scripts again but I've deactivated them by default so if you want to use these you just gotta delete this bit right here and the last one as well because it basically breaks the game, which is very unfortunate. It happens on many PCs. I have, I said this in a previous tutorial as well, and I'm very sorry about this, but it just makes the game look very, very, yeah, tolerable. Actually, it looks tolerable. It looks better. It doesn't look grainy. That's all I really have to say about that. Uh, the same goes for this one. Let's go a bit of controls here. Which I'm going to be explaining a bit more thoroughly. These are the normal controls, which will be executed when you're not holding the right mouse button. Because if you are holding the right mouse button, you will uh, strafe when you press A and strafe right when you press D. So in this case, you will move forward when you press W, you will move left when you press A, and you will move D uh, when you move D. <laughs> really now. You will move to the right when you press D. So, as you can see, there is something called facing. Direction is facing. Direction is facing plus 90. Direction is facing minus 90. Well, I will be explaining that later, as facing is pretty important for the third person aspect rather than a first person aspect. And also, you'll notice there is CH plus 2. I don't know why I called it CH. Oh, wait, I do. It's um, slang for crosshair in my world. And this basically means that the... Oh, please, not again. The crosshair will grow when you move. Uh, you, you've seen it in any shooting game, probably. Let's go to the, the alternative controls, which is for strafing. The direction is facing at all times, so when you hold the right mouse button, you will move at the desired location that you're currently aiming at. So, as you can see, you will move forward when you press W again, but you will strafe left and right rather than move in that direction. Which means that you can shoot in the direction you're facing while walking to the left or walking to the right. Uh, you've all seen this code probably. I've seen it about, let's say, nine years ago on that first-person shooter tutorial written by Mark Overmars. And good times, really good times. Let's uh, keep going to the objects, which is of course the most important part of this tutorial. Start 3D. Here's a little introduction written by me. And as you can see, I'm using these again, but you can basically delete these. These aren't 
kind of obsolete when you're not using these two scripts. D4D start, entering 3D mode is very important. And don't forget, if you want to go to a two-dimensional room for, say, uh, an infantry or back to the menu, use D4D end instead of start. Otherwise, your game will still be in 3D and you won't be able to see anything. D4D set lighting is set to false by default, but hidden is set to true by default. Draw three-dimensional depth like I commented right here. D4D set culling is set to true. Draw one side of each triangle. Draw set color is set to white by default instead of black, otherwise you won't be able to see any textures, which is, um, you know, annoying. Z is set to zero by default. I wanted to make a ramp, but it totally slipped my mind, so I'm sorry about that. I do know how to do that, so if you want that, of course, in the next tutorial, please leave a comment. Pitch is set to zero by default. Depth is 40,000. The camera must be the deepest object, of course. Otherwise, there will be nothing uh, nothing will be drawn as this object contains the projection the camera height is set to 210 by default that's probably the player's height maybe it's a bit above the player's head now well, you can tell of course if you try to game out yourself the camera distance set to 128 by default if you increase this number you will be further away from the character and uh, vice versa facing set to zero point x is x point y is y these are for the smooth transition between facing positions. I will get to that later. And faced is zero, which is the, basically the direction you're facing, and dears is for strafing. Let's go to loading some 3D models, not very important, but you know, here it is. These are all the models that I'm loading. I forgot to do a walking animation. Really, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, actually. I wanted to do a lot more for this tutorial, but this tutorial is made in about, let's say, an hour, two hours. So there really isn't that much. So here are all the models. You can check them out in Model Creator 5, of course. Which I'll probably do a tutorial on as well, as there aren't very, <laughs> as there aren't very many tutorials on, the, on Model Creator version 5. And it's pretty complicated if you don't know how to use it. Let's go to the step event. Display W is displays get width, change X, you know, all this crap. I'm not going to be able to explain this as I copy pasted it from, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 of my older games that I use this code. Pitches clamp. Thank you again for this clamp thing. It's great. It's so good. Let's go keyboard. When you press escape, the game will end. And here we go. Here's the point X again. So variable len x len y sets length dir x 32 direction. That sounds like a lot of mathematics, but it's it's really not that complicated actually. This means that it will be 32 pixels in front of the x position, I think, according to the direction. And the same goes for y, which basically means, for example, here is the player. It will be right here or something. <laughs> That's a very bad explanation, but. You'll prob you probably know what I mean if you know what this is. Wow, I'm getting this one a lot. And here's the smooth transitioning. Point X goes to point X divided by two and a half. This means it will take two and a half steps to get to this position. And it will look very smooth, actually. It looks really nice. Otherwise, you will have this, you know, very... Um, how do you call... What do you... How do you say that? Very sudden change, quick change, I really don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Face is point direction to point X and point Y, which is also part of the smooth transition. Oh, there, here are the controls, I totally forgot about them. If you're not holding the right mouse button, you will execute normal controls. If you are holding the right mouse button, you will execute the alternative controls. I really don't know how to pronounce the word button, button. It's really weird. If you're from Holland, you will probably have the same problem as I have. This is annoying. This is a very bad word. This The speed is being divided by its own speed times... Th or what? Div divided by 3 each time. Which means you will eventually stop without using friction or anything. I think friction does the same thing, actually. Recoil minus recoil divides by itself, and so goes for the crosshair. 
If you're colliding with the wall, here's collision code, which isn't that important. You've probably seen this one in all my tutorials before. If you press the left mouse button, you will shoot, but you can only shoot when you're holding the right mouse button, which is basically for aiming. And then the sound will play and there will be recoil. Like I mentioned, there are no bullets yet. That will be in future tutorials, as that is just not part of the third person aspect that I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Um, this is the third person projection code, Lang X again, but this one is called Len underscore uh, under uh, what? What what's that thing called? <laughs> uh, I totally forgot about it. That's stupid. Uh, cam distance facing 210, and here's the long projection code. And here's a little interesting thing. Um, as opposed to a third and first person shooter, you will have you will not have a fixed position. You will not have X, Y, X, Y, but X plus this position, Y plus this position, which obviously um, make sure you're not inside of the player's eyesight, but rather on the back of his head at all times. So that's that. Uh, test object, here's the object being drawn. It's a lot of stuff, but it's basically the same thing over and over with some very minor changes like this one has a recoil animation and this one I think this one yeah this one goes with the pitch when it's which the vertical mouse uh, position and then last but not least the HUD this is a very basic HUD I will be covering a more advanced graphical user interface in future tutorials maybe for the first person tutorials as well Draw Alep's color, which is just the crosshair. It's a very simple crosshair. Right, that's the player covered, which was the most important part. Now it's only going to get easier. This is the little block that you've probably seen in the beginning of the video. It creates this little object, object block reflection. And, well, reflection, y you really don't need that, but it just looks pretty. I like that. Looks pretty good. DVD transform set identity, same things. And here's the important thing, DVD set Z right enable. I've I haven't used this one in previous tutorials, I think. Or well, maybe I have, but I totally forgot about it. This one is very important for the ambient occlusion. So if you don't want ambient occlusion, you can just delete this entire thing. This um, actually stops the anti-aliasing anti the ambient occlusion from over overlapping which looks just it just looks good this one is 0 0.5 above the ground and so is this one you can't see it but in model creator you will notice it it makes sure it just doesn't uh, you will not have any alpha issues anymore let's just put it at that but it does give you some errors if you have different depths between objects so that's pretty annoying but for this it, it's just perfect it's it's perfect uh, let's see what else can we do object test floor here's the test floor texture of a ground texture of ground which is this one and texture sky which is this one well that's that covered that's uh yeah it's just this it's nothing special and then well I think that's it include files here are the models here's the GMFT DLL that which causes a lot of problems with uh, you guys unfortunately sorry about that I may stop including this one as it it's just really annoying. Well, I think we covered all of it. Yeah, I didn't skip anything, I don't think. Nothing too important. Well, yeah, guys, I think that's it. I want to thank you a thousand times for watching. I will have a poll in the description below asking for future tutorials, which you, of course, can decide what is what it's going to be. And I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.